Hey, Bev. Hey, Bev. <laughs> it's always a relief. It's always a relief. <laughs> you never know how lives are going to turn out. Hello, Isabel. Um, so we are remote. So um, I, uh, I'm, I'm Roland. Uh, uh, I'm Roland. I uh, am the director of the company. Um, I am at the moment in the office. Uh, Juan Ma uh, is a sales manager. Uh, he's in is um, remote, so he's working from home. You you we are at home, Juan Ma. I am indeed, yeah, working here from the comfort of the bedroom, uh, just like many, many people here during lockdown. So installed myself a nice desk here, and here we go, ready to ready to bring the people walking. Good. We have this little arrangement there uh, on the computer, so we have this Zoom between uh, Juan Ma and myself, so um, we can communicate between the two of us. And we are streaming um, the slideshow that you can see on your screen um, with uh, Facebook Live. Um, last time we were, um, um, I had some little issue there. Uh, I hope this time will be perfect. Put your comment there. I, I will be the I will be the moderator uh, for this uh, for this Facebook Live uh, as as I am streaming for you guys. So. One ma, are you ready? I am indeed born ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna start. So, um, thank you very much, guys, for uh, joining us uh, on this event. Um, this is our um, third or fourth event of the year, and this one is a special one. We're officially trying to kick uh, kick off now, uh, two thousand twenty one, and. Um, We've been waiting 11 years for 2021. And why? Um, the, this is the famous all year. Um, this is the, uh, the year of St. James. Um, and the last time it happened, it was in uh, 2010. Um, and I remember um, there was this movie with Martin Sheen called Away. And it made such an effect, you know, on, on everyone, I think. So, uh, 2021, 11 years um, we've been waiting for. So we're going to try to give you a taste of the Camino and um, why uh, we think it's going to be so special. Um, so, um, so just going to give you a little summary, a little taste of our presentation. Uh, we will spend half an hour with you uh, not more than that um, we'll try to even finish a little bit before to give a chance to answer some of the questions so um, we are a tour operator um, based in Dublin we organize walking tour cycling tour but I, I do believe that we're doing a little bit more than that we have, um, you know, we're really involved in the communities. We have a lot of blogs and we have a really um, a lot of information on the website. Um, we are really connected to the pilgrims. We we're often uh, seen on the Camino as well. Uh, we're supporting as well um, organization on the ground. Um, um, and um, so, um, you know, we 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 do we we believe you know in the the community and the sharing of the Camino. It's not, it's it's more than a business for us. Um, so, um, we you know so we're a tour operator. We we select and and choose nice accommodations. Um, uh, you know, generally um, standard of accommodation with bathrooms and en suite and. Oh, you know, sometimes they are farm stay accommodation, large garden with swimming pool, or just simple uh, hotel in the center uh, uh, of the villages in the Camino. Um, Indeed, that is one question yeah. that we get quite a lot. Uh, what sort of accommodation will we book? Uh, will you be sharing in albergues or hostels? Uh, not really. Uh, all the accommodation that we book for you guys and with 
plan out for for your trips is always ensuite with your own private bathroom as you can see there in the image we have uh, three separate types of accommodation the one picture on the left could be just standard hotel typical three-star hotel or a family run hotel uh, a country cottage the one you see in the middle very unique from galicia but almost exclusive to the area it's not one that you can see in many many places but once you're in galicia it's absolutely stunning and the, the third one obviously the superior collection and uh, those could be four star five star hotels really the very best we can find along the way so they are real treats obviously you can combine you can mix and match the the accommodations you don't have to go full out for one or the other you can if you wish go for standard and apply a, an upgrade here or there so that's it so let's get started on the Oli year 2021 and um, yeah i think we're quite excited about that and um, um where were you on ma in, in 2010 and the the last uh, Oli year what were you doing well, believe it or not i was already in ireland oh, okay. <laughs> I had already moved over over across the water, uh, but as a Galician man, every every ano shakoveo, every holy year is very very special. Um, it starts from everywhere: the the mm. bottle waters, the um, the water bottles, the, the football matches. They are they all carry the the logo of the holy year. You see it in in advertising. You see it on TV. You see it on on the streets. It's pretty much everywhere uh, for Galicia, of course. It is a, a year when we welcome hundreds and thousands of, of pilgrims. So we normally do it, but we do it with, with special passion and with, with special will every whole year. As, as you said, the last one was 11 years ago. That is the, the longest way we the mm. longest wait we have to, to wait, really, uh, in between holy years, because they run every 11, 7 or 6. So. And what, this what, one is a, a particularly anticipated one, I could say. But what what's so special about the Oli year? I mean, why was it not this year? What what is why is it next year? Well, basically, every every holy year, it's a year when the festivity of Saint James, the the National Day of Galicia, the twenty fifth of July, actually falls on a Sunday. Uh, so that's why it makes it the uh, all a bit more special. Um, Normally on the the night on the of the twenty fourth, there is a big big celebration with a really nice, as you can see in the picture, there are really beautiful uh, lights and fireworks display and sound display. It is a show really to behold. It is a sight to behold. Uh, mm. So it is it is really really nice to spend a, a Saturday in Santiago just awaiting the awaiting the. Um, big big ceremony and also a nice Sunday to walk through the streets of Santiago and still enjoying all the all the celebrations and the mass of course. Hey, Juan Ma, um, I, I believe you're you're from Galicia yeah? I am indeed of course yeah from Vigo, um, uh, local uh, born and raised in Vigo and moved to Ireland here at my 18 years of age which uh, now seem a long way away Roland. Earlier you were saying, uh, Juan Ma, Año Jacobeo. What does Año Jacobeo mean? It's a Jacobean year or a Jubilee, Holy Year. It, it just remarks really the, the fact that it is a year dedicated to St. Jacob, St. James or uh, Santiago, as we call it in Galician. So Jacob? Is the is a name for Santiago? Is it the same, Jacob? It is the same, indeed. James, Jacob, Jacob, uh, Tiago in Portuguese, Santiago in in Galician. So yeah, it has many many names. in James the Great. Okay, so tell me uh, j just for a start there, so we understand uh, what is happening um, in, in terms of religious. Um, um, religious things happening, ceremonies. What is, what is happening? What is so special? What makes the the, the Camino um, um, the religious place of it? Yeah. Obviously, it has a huge religious aspect to it. Um, it is the most important pilgrimage in Catholicism now, even more than Rome or Jerusalem. Um, and obviously, um, it has two very very important facts. Number one is that 
it is the only year that you can that you can access the cathedral through the through the holy door or the Porta do Perdón, the forgiveness gate as well. It's another one of the names it receives, uh, which is open from actually not from January 1st, as many people think, but actually from December 31st. So it is open the day before the new year starts, the, the Ano Shakoveo starts, and it's closed again on December 31st. Uh, and since the 12th century, uh, all the pilgrims who, who visit the shrine uh, on that holy year, they are granted the, the plenary indulgence. Um, it is a very, very important time. Obviously, we have to think of uh, the Camino de Santiago, not as much as the the, 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 the cultural mm. aspect of it, but more the religious side of it, of course. It is charged with, with symbolism from, from Middle Ages. People mm. were carrying their burdens and their sins with them, just the way the same way we carry the, the backpacks today. And they were just making their way to Santiago in order to claim that indulgence from the saints, or in order to be forgiven, pretty much. Okay, um, and and they never opened this door. Uh, they only opened this door on all year. So last time that they opened that door was like eleven years ago. Indeed, yes. Okay. <laughs> Indeed, it might need a bit of greasing after yeah. <laughs> ten years of being closed, but we promise that it will be open one way or another. Can you tell me? <laughs> can you tell me a little bit more about this plenary indulgence? Uh, what's that? What's that about? What is the the indulgence? Well, obviously, the the indulgence it's it's very, very, very closely linked to 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 confession in in Catholicism, and the the indulgence is uh, kind of removing all the all the time that you can spend in purgatory uh, because you are completing and you are actually being forgiven of all your sins. So that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell, really. Once you so, once you get there, it doesn't matter what you've done before, so, as long as you follow some very, very important steps too. So you go for drinks before or after? <laughs> you can do anything you want before. Okay. Don't go all out. No, just Sounds... Still be a nice pilgrim. Okay. <laughs> Everybody will appreciate it. Um, I, I just I just learned there recently that there was some rules to get the plenary indulgence. Right? You have to do a certain steps as well. You're not can you don't have. You, it's not like you just walk and get it. You you got to do something at the cathedral or something. Is it? Of course, of course. Actually, walking funnily enough, is not one of the requirements. You actually have to just visit the cathedral, uh, say a prayer for the Pope once you're in the cathedral, attend one of the masses, the pilgrim mass, which can be attended uh, either at midday, 12, or in the afternoon at 7, and obviously go to go to go for a confession session, uh, receive the, the sacrament of reconciliation, as we very nicely worded in there. Uh, but yeah, you have to you need to confess, and after doing all those four um, those those four steps, you yeah. will be granted your plenary indulgence, and all your all your sins will be forgiven. Uh, hopefully, you haven't committed too many, as Roland, you seem to be thinking of doing. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Very funny one, that uh. day you will be, you will be, uh, you will be forgiven from all of them. Tell me, Juanma, what is uh, okay now? That's the religious aspect of it. What is uh, what is happening around um, the 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 cathedral? Um, is there other other things than uh, just the cathedral opening up and things? Is there something else to do, or that is happening during those days? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, for the the week prior to the um, to the event itself, uh, Santiago is filled pretty much with uh, with street musicians, with uh, performances, with exhibitions about pilgrimage, exhibitions about the Camino itself, uh, and you really can enjoy a really really wonderful time in in Santiago if you arrive even a couple of days before the before the main event main event obviously could be the the 24th of july uh, the evening before saint james day uh, with that uh, amazing uh, firework display that we see year on year um, but the rest of the week it's packed with with activities as well okay great um, um tell me do i need to book um do i need to book uh, for the all year 2021 can I just turn up or what's the... 
Well, it is a, it is especially busy, especially busy year, of course. And every any time you go, really, uh, will have different amounts of people. But you can always expect that whole year, that the whole year is going to draw a lot of people um, to the to the Camino. We see an increase of probably a. a fifty percent of the people who normally go uh, and that has been the fashion ever ever since the 80s when the when the Anna Jacobeo was given all that that status of being actually a, a really really good appeal and therefore yes it is very very recommended that you book early because obviously the places do get a bit crowded depending depending on the route mm -hmm. so it is important to to get your to get your food on the door first okay great so let's say i want to go on the camino because it's just amazing it's true the camino is amazing we love it but um i want to go as well during uh, july and august uh, july time uh, we'll come to the weather in in a minute but let's say i want to go um I mean, and I want to walk as well, just because I like to walk, because I want to be outdoor, because I don't like to stay in crowded place, um, because, you know, it's nice to be in the nature and just meet people. So tell me, what are my roots options? Um, yeah, wh wh what are my roots options? Wh what kind of Camino route I can follow? I, I can see on this map there is quite a lot of options, though. Indeed, indeed, yes. Uh, many, many people tend to think of the of the Camino as just the, the French way, the Camino Frances. But actually, the Camino is a, it's a network of trails all leading up to, to Santiago de Compostela. And it doesn't matter which one you take, you're, you are going to finish up in Santiago de Compostela, hopefully. We, we wish you the very best of luck with that. Um, and there are routes really to suit anyone. Uh, the French Way, it is undoubtedly the most popular of all routes. Uh, it's the one that every movie, every book, every show is about, really. And obviously, it is, it is easy to see why it became so popular. It was the merging point from all the different routes, for most of the of all different routes in continental Europe. They could cross over the... the um, the Napoleon Pass uh, and into Spain and then they could use the meseta pretty much like we use today's highways uh, it was the flattest way to get into Santiago it was the safest because uh, there were more and more towns offering services for pilgrims and they fed back uh, each other the Camino made them more, more popular and these towns made the, the French way more popular so that's how it became the most popular of all routes but obviously there are Plenty, plenty of choices for anyone out there. As you can see, the Portuguese way was the route used by uh, Portuguese pilgrims uh, to make their way to Santiago. It's also full of history, full of small medieval and Roman towns, really, really pretty. The primitivo way, or the original way, was the pre-Christian walk, and it follows the footsteps on the Celtic cultures that lived in the north of Spain. The Northern Way, which is the latest addition, really, to the official uh, waymark trails of the Camino de Santiago. It's a stunning, stunning uh, walk. Again, it served the people north of the Picos de Europa and the Cantabrian mountain range to make their way into Santiago. And it is a really, really spectacular one, but slightly more challenging. So. You need to be up for it. But tell me and one more. Finally, mm -hmm. I like to go at the beach there. I like to. I like the coast and I like the beach. What, what, do I have option to where I can spend a few days? I, I mean, not walking on in the sand. It's not my point. It's really trying to walk along the coast, really. Is there options for that? There is indeed, yeah. You, obviously, you don't need to take on these full routes on, on one go. Uh, that is one of the great things really about our self-guided tours that you can just pretty much uh, pick and choose where you want to start, where you want to finish. And if you want to walk on a coastal on a coastal route, uh, you have the beautiful northern coast. Uh, obviously, 
bit more challenging, but you also have the Portuguese coastal way, for example, uh, where you walk on boardwalks, uh, you're barely gain, gaining any, any elevation, and you're still enjoying some amazing views of the of the Atlantic coast of, of Portugal and Spain. So yeah, yes, you can you can do there. a you can do a week on the Camino on the Portuguese and um, just finish in Santiago. Really, is it? Indeed, yeah, you can do a week or three, even three days if you wish, or two weeks or even five weeks to complete the full thing in any route you like. Okay, great. So I've done a little bit my study as well on the Camino because of, you know, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just um, sharing here with you um, the, um, the number of pilgrims per month. So you can see that generally there's more people um, in uh, July and August. Um, it's generally uh, more Spanish going um, uh, in July and August. So uh, there is a lot of students and there is also people going on a day or two on the Camino. Um, uh, generally, uh, the Northern Europeans, um, Americans, Canadians, um, travel uh, more around uh, from, let's say, March to June and September, October. Um, um, those months are, are for us uh, the most popular. Uh, spring is nice because it's not too hot. Uh, same, um, same in uh, September and October. Uh, you have a bit more certainty about uh, your, your weather. Um, so that's the amount of pilgrim per month. The pilgrim that get actually their certificate, okay? Uh, if we move to the next uh, slide, uh, the time to go. Uh, Juan Ma, mm -hmm. do you think? I mean, you know, the early year there in 2021, I mean, it's still in July. Do, do you think it's not really a great time to go or? I mean, it may it be too hot. It depends on like. how you can handle the heat, really. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's going to be very yeah. hot, is it? It can get very, very hot, as I found out very, very infamously in a in a particular day on the Portuguese way, uh, where it got up to 34 degrees. Really, I was not a pretty picture by the end of that walk, Roland. So, so it's not really <laughs> it's not really good to book during that time. Then it's probably better not to go. Then is it? I could say that May and September could be a, a more suitable time for the Camino. Bear in mind that you're still walking uh, an average of 20, 25 kilometers a day. Uh, so while you want the sun and you want the good weather, you also don't want the 35 degrees temperatures. <laughs> yeah, but the average, I think, in Santiago is 25 degrees in July. Um, and I did it, I've, actually, I, I did that uh, a part of the Camino, not that one in particular, but not that far. Uh, I did it in August and w it it was not that hot. I know you can get heat wave, but um, I don't think it's 35 degrees uh, for two months, though. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I, we, we did get in, uh, in the middle of a really, really hot day, and it was not a, not a particularly pleasant time. But obviously, up until, I mean, in terms of hiking, I could maybe avoid August a little bit because it can get a bit too hot, especially if you're going in the midlands of Spain or anything like that. But anything other than that, from spring to, to autumn, really, they could make for very, very pleasant walks. When you think of uh, the north of Spain, you don't have to think either of the, of the very, very hot temperatures that we get on the south, where it could get really, really hot. Uh, but as you said, Roland, even through, even through August, you can get mild temperatures of 25 to 30 degrees. If you um, go uh, on the Camino and you have like a nice little hotel, okay, and you have your luggage transfer, what do you need to bring with you? Obviously very, very little. Uh, try and travel as light as possible. Uh, and if you are um, traveling with us, we can also offer to, to, to take the luggage forward for you. So you can just bring a small pack with you, a small backpack with you, with just the daily essentials, obviously. Bring some, some layers, uh, maybe pack a, a thermal t-shirt if you see that it is quite cold and a light fleece. 
and even a, a, a small poncho or a small waterproof coat, something light that you can easily stow away if you don't need it, but something that you will always have in your back if you do, if you do end up needing it. Bring a hat and a cap and sun cream if the weather is good and the poncho obviously if it is if it is raining. Uh, do check the forecast beforehand just to to kind of uh, stress out which one you need the most, either the hat and cap or the or the poncho. Bring your camera and batteries with it. Don't forget to empty your memory card before you leave. And of course, bring some water, bring some food. Um, routes like the French Way, they have plenty of plenty of restaurants, plenty of bars along the way. But whenever hunger strikes, uh, you might be a mile or two away from the from a restaurant or from a shop, and that's a mile or two that you you really wish you you could have a little snack or a little apple or even the smallest of things to to bring to your mouth. Good stuff. Uh, excellent. Um, so we just have a few tips there um, in terms of look. Pick the right route. I mean, there is a route for everyone. Um, one man was speaking about the Northern Way. That's absolutely nice along the coast, but some of the sections are a little bit tough. Uh, the original route as well uh, is a bit more mountainy, can be a bit more difficult as well. But if you like the nature and the mountain, you're going to love it. If you look something uh, more social, uh, the French Way is always your best bet. Plenty of little cafe en route, restaurant, stop for tea and coffee and continue. Every, every one hour you generally have an option for a little stop, a little break. Um, the Portuguese is absolute, and, and the Finisterre are, are absolutely fantastic for the coast and, you know, the, 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 um, the wide views. Fantastic practice. I mean, we organize. The last Sunday of each month, if you uh, jump on our newsletter, CaminoWays.com newsletter, and also on our Facebook, you can just check. We organize little practice run last Sunday of each month. Next month, uh, uh, we, we have another one uh, in the Hellfire Club, not close for, to Dublin. Uh, and just um, for everybody, you know, just practice, try to, you know, to do your 10, 15 kilometers. If you're capable to do... Uh, you know, 10, 15 kilometers uh, over one day and then two days. I mean, I think you'll be fine, um, you know, and um, yeah, take your um, pilgrim passport, get your stamp, get your certificate. And uh, and I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. Um, we got um, um, a couple of uh, ebook on CaminoWays.com for your training, your preparation, what to do. Um, so uh, go and download it. It's free. It's a, it's an ebook. You can uh, have a look. Uh, you can download it on your phone and open it as a as a as a book. Um, and and uh, we got few videos as well on our YouTube channel and uh, for the training on your Camino. Um, otherwise, um, I think we've covered um, pretty much everything. One more. Did what did we did we forget anything? I think we're pretty we're pretty good. Uh, I don't know if anyone if anyone has any questions there in these last minute last two minutes, uh, but yeah, I think I hope that everybody got a, a good idea of what the um, what the whole year is like. I think every everyone got a, a little idea on what the Camino entails, and hopefully. Uh, we answered your questions. If you don't, however, if we haven't, uh, please feel free to, to email us to info at CaminoWays.com. There will always be somebody here in the, in the sales department uh, looking after you. So we would be more than happy to, to answer any 